At least 300,000 years ago, the youngest of the five volcanoes that make up the island of Hawaii was formed. The natives named it Kilauea, meaning much spreading, referring to the constant flow of lava that poured out of it. Over the centuries, the volcano's humbling potential and its stunning landscape have rooted it into the very identity of the Big Island, an ever-present reminder of all that nature is capable of, an ever-present source of inspiration for those seeking to prove humankind can offer visions of the incredible as well. It's been 40 years since a small group of dreamers came up with this idea. Born out of an argument over which kind of athlete, swimmer, biker, or runner was the most fit. But what began from there as an experiment as much as a race has since turned into one of the most famed sporting events in the world. Now this year, in the wake of one of the Kilauea volcano's most explosive eruptions in years, the 40th anniversary of the race went off with nearly 2,500 competitors from 82 countries around the globe. Nearly 2,500 stories of perseverance, commitment, and drive. This is the tale of what unfolded over 2.4 miles in the ocean, 112 miles across the lava fields, and the marathon along the coast. This is the 2018 Ironman World Championship, brought to you by Amazon. In the pre-dawn darkness on the shores of Kailua Bay, the process unites them all. The body marking, the equipment tune-ups, and the growing anticipation of the start of the most challenging day in sports that's ever been dreamed up. There's no bigger race all year for the best in the world, like Daniela Reef, 31 years old from Switzerland. The dominant force in the women's professional field, she's won this race the last three years, and she's the favorite to make it four in a row today. These four times I've been here, these races, they changed a lot in my life, you know, it made me a uh, world champion and what came with it is, uh, it's pretty special. If Reef is going to be challenged today, the biggest threat might come from Lucy Charles, 25 years old from England, a swimmer who turned to triathlon in 2014 and won the 18 to 24 age category at the Ironman the next year. She then turned pro and made a huge splash last year, finishing second. To come in last year, it was my first year racing here as a pro and my ultimate goal was really to be in the top 10. But I think that's given me such a confidence boost going into this year and I've been able to build on that as well. Anne Haug is a former Olympian from Germany who's become a threat since turning to Ironman. Now at age 35, she'll be making her Kona debut in the biggest race of them all. Just the fact that energy is endable, that you can run out of energy, it's like an experience I've never had before. For the men, the spotlight once again is on 32-year-old Patrick Lange of Germany, who last year didn't just win this race, but broke the world championship course record set in 2011. To be here as defending world champion just after five Ironman races that are done by now, it's pretty crazy still, yeah. Lange's top rival and countryman Jan Fredino, the winner of this race in 2015 and 16, is out with an injury. But Lange will still have plenty of challengers as he seeks a second straight world championship. With a deep professional men's field that includes Spain's Javier Gomez, whose spot in the bike rack affords an opportunity for some pre-race conversation with Australia's Josh Amberger, one of the best swimmers in the field. I feel as if a lot of people come to this race and they play it very safe, but this is a race that I really want to win and I want to get a podium at. I like to take the risks and I hope that people are also inspired um, by me taking those risks and want to join me at the front of the race. A year ago came history for Cameron Wirf as the Australian shattered the course record on the bike by five minutes. I didn't do anything crazy to try and break the world record, I was trying to win the race. It doesn't really mean anything until I win this thing. <laughs> They're among the very best of every athlete here. 
all in Kona with the same absolute objective. Winning a world title at the Ironman World Championships is such an amazingly complex puzzle. It's a hard race and when you survive it, it's such a big reward. You can never predict the result here. It can be in the best shape and there's a lot of things can happen. Iron Man's a different beast. How's it going to unfold? What kind of highs and lows are ahead of me and how am I going to react to them? The athletes are so willing to take chances in such a horrendously hard environment. It doesn't make sense. It's the mental system, your, your head, it's the energy, and then it's muscle fatigue. This is a game of who can get to hour seven having conserved and be as well hydrated as possible because he who covers hour seven the best will win. People are willing to say, you know what, I'm gonna go for it because you wanna win a world title. And that's pretty awesome. The first athletes to head toward the Roca swim course are the 48 professional men in the field who will begin their odyssey with a 2.4 mile swim in Kailua Bay. The weather on this October morning in Hawaii appears as close to perfect as these competitors could ever hope for. which they know presents an opportunity to race not just for a world championship, but a world championship record. From underneath, they look like a school of fish, patiently waiting in place. Waiting for the ceremonial cannon to go off and catapult them forward. brought to you by Amazon, is on its way! The presence of the crowd and the size of the moment no doubt give an added dose of adrenaline for the first few hundred meters. And then the pack gradually separates as they pull out further into the water. For the women, England's Lucy Charles, last year's runner-up, is expected to go out fast. She knows she'll need every second of advantage she can get with Daniela Reef aiming for her fourth straight win here. In the water, there's a sense of camaraderie between them. But when the cannon goes off, every one of them does everything they can to be the first to the finish line professionals on their way. As expected, Charles gets off to a quick start. Last year's top finisher in the swim looking to replicate that effort and build an early lead that can pay dividends hours from now. For the professional men, the early leader is, sure enough, Australia's Josh Amberger. Though going in, he was of the mind to be more cautious when the field separated. I've got a lot of speed in the water as well as endurance, so typically I like to play that speed card early to, to create a split. But I think, you know, definitely last year that worked against me because I simply isolated myself against the field. So this year I'd like to perhaps start a bit slower, give some guys a chance. If you want to be a hero, the second part of the race, the marathon, is the time to do that, not necessarily on the swim. And Midway through the Roca swim course, it's Josh Amberger with nine others in chase for the men and Lucy Charles out in front for the women. But the tale of the 2018 Ironman World Championship, brought to you by Amazon, has only begun to unfold. More than a mile out in the Pacific Ocean, Lucy Charles is all alone as she approaches the turnaround of the Roca swim course, far ahead of defending champion Daniela Reef. 
The best case is to swim with Lauren again. That worked really well last year. So I think we've both been working on our swim game. So hopefully we're going to both swim even quicker this year and, and hope to get a bigger gap than we did last year. In the men's swim moments earlier, it was hardly a surprise when Josh Amberger turned around holding the lead. But the Australian is also keeping to his pre-race strategy, tethered closely to nine other swimmers just behind him with another 1.2 miles to go. At the start line 30 minutes after the professionals take off, every face tells a different story. Some of them have come to Kona chasing a victory in their age group. Plenty of others have come to set a personal best, or perhaps their goal is to simply finish. What unites them all is the challenge ahead of them and the knowledge that it will test them like nothing else in their life ever has or ever will. The cannon goes off for the men first. And 10 minutes later, it blasts again for the women. Age group women field is out of play. Just a few hundred yards out from the dock, the top professional men are finishing their swim. Nine of them separated by less than 20 seconds. One massive group just beginning their journey in the water, another smaller one carried by adrenaline to the finish of theirs. There they are, they're coming our way, look at that pack. Josh Amberger is right where he wants to be, and the big names just behind him include Tim O'Donnell, Javier Gomez, and Anthony Cost. As for Lucy Charles, her plan was to go out strong and not look back. And past the second turn, the result appears to be mission accomplished. The women's chase group is led by American Lauren Brandon, a former collegiate swimmer, with New Zealand's Teresa Adam behind her, while defending champion Daniela Reef is another pack further behind. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it looks like nine. Will our champion come out of that? There we go, Josh Hamburger, first out of the water. Jenna Chavreau from France, Maurice Corbel, Germany, Tim O'Donnell. Josh Hamburger swam the 2.4 miles 30 seconds slower than his blazing pace of a year ago, staying with his 2018 strategy of not going at it alone. The transitions in this race might seem like the easy part to the novice, but to every one of these competitors, every second matters. Back at the Kailua Pier, Lucy Charles finishes off a dominant swim. At 48 minutes and 14 seconds, a new course record. And when Lauren Brandon came out of the water second, she was almost three minutes in back of Charles, who will be the first on her bike to begin the 112 miles second discipline of the race. Lucy Charles, head note, our lead woman. The 25 year old from England will be all alone for a while on the bike looking to stay as far away as possible for as long as possible from a field that includes the greatest female Ironman triathletes in the world. Here she comes, your defending champion, Daniela Reef. Daniela Reef gets out of the water nine minutes back and then heads into the med tent for treatment for a jellyfish sting, costing her another minute. It's the kind of surprise that comes in Ironman no matter how much you prepare. I had one of the best preparations I've ever had. The last few months have been really fantastic and it focused on every day to make the best possible. I did all I could uh, in my preparation, but of course it doesn't mean anything if you then can't show it in a race. As the professionals continue to come into T1, a familiar face in 17th place in the men's race gets set to begin his bike ride. Tim Don has the second fastest Ironman time in history. But considering what happened a year ago, it's extraordinary that the 40-year-old legend is even racing here at all. So I was riding on the Queen K in the cycle lane. There's a gas station to my right, a car coming towards me, turned in front of me. And I remember thinking, I've got my new tires on, and I skidded. 
And then the next thing I remember, I woke up and I was on the floor with lots of people around me, lots of pain in my neck, my shoulder, my knee, my hip. It was just a few days before last year's Ironman World Championship in Kailua Kona. Don had been a top contender. But now there was a very uncertain road ahead with a broken neck and fears he'd never compete again. Just broke the world record for Ironman. I've got third at the world 70.3. So to go from what could have been a fight for a world title to doing nothing and it's totally out of your control, that was tough. Desperate to recover as soon as he could, Don elected for a procedure patients rarely consider, even as it's the quickest way to heal a broken neck, wearing a halo brace. If I said, hey, I'm gonna screw four titanium bolts into your head tighter than a seat post bolt of a bicycle, you'd probably say, no, I'm okay, thank you. <laughs> can't put your clothes on, you can't shower, you can't wash yourself, but it puts a stop to your life as you know it. We really didn't know the extent of the injury and how quick I could come back. It was just a month and a couple of days after the halo was put on, and it was a five minutes on a, a gym exercise bike. When I look back, it wasn't really training because it was only five minutes. But for me, it was just that endorphin release of just like, oh, I feel human again. <laughs> Life happens whether you like it or not, and it's, it's kind of how you deal with it, what you make of the situation, and I'm so lucky. Ironman is an eight to 14 hour race. There's so many variables, and even within your race, you're on a journey and you have to be strong physically and mentally because things will go wrong. The goal for me is to go as fast as I can, swim, bike, run. As they say, if you get lemons, you know, don't be a sour, go and <laughs> make some lemonade, I guess. Improbably, Tim dons among the professional men on the bike on the Queen Kaumanu Highway. Meanwhile, up ahead, when they reach the seven mile mark, a veteran American takes the lead. 38 year old Tim O'Donnell from Shavertown, Pennsylvania, twice before the top American in this race. And also this year, a new dad as well. But some top contenders are just behind him. There's plenty more story to write in the 2018 Ironman World Championship brought to you by Amazon. The story of every Ironman World Championship takes hours and hours to unfold miles and miles to develop. And a little more than eight miles into the Ventum bike course on the Queen Kaumanu Highway, there's a new leader in the professional men's race, 30-year-old Denis Chevreau of France, now at the front of an early lead pack jockeying for position as they streak towards Javi. Meanwhile, on the pro women's side, it's a much different tale. Lucy Charles established a huge lead in her swim, and she's maintained it so far on the bike. In fact, her record-setting swim was so impressive that she surged past some pro men in the water. Back in the bay, there's another athlete in the age groupers chasing his own ambitious goal. Jan Siberson is 43 years old and the manager of the defending champion in the men's professional ranks, fellow German Patrick Lange. Siberson finishes his swim with a frantic sprint out of the water and up the stairs. The final steps in his chase of the course record in the swim, a mark that stood for more than two decades. And at 46 minutes and 29 seconds, he's got it. A new world championship course record in his fifth attempt to break it. And plenty to celebrate on the pier. Five miles outside of Kailua Kona, on this picture-perfect day in the South Pacific, the picture for the pro women is holding steady. Lucy Charles with a commanding lead on the bike. And for the pro men, Patrick Longa, the world championship course record holder, is chasing the lead group with still a good amount of distance to make up. Though he and everyone in the field knows that last year, he didn't take the lead until late in the marathon a juncture in the race still many hours away. For now though, up front, the bike specialists will continue to jockey for the lead. And at about the 17 mile mark, 
American Andrew Starkowitz cedes the front position to the Frenchman they call Le Tigre, Anthony Cost. So for the moment, it's Cost for the men, and still in command for the women, Lucy Charles. Though a few miles back, the jellyfish sting Daniela Reef sustained in the water appears a distant memory, and she's beginning to make her move on the field. While the bike discipline of the race can be harshly isolating, back at the pier, the transition for the age groupers out of the water is one of the wildest scenes the Ironman World Championship has to offer. Hundreds of competitors, in the water and on dry land, adrenaline fueled by the knowledge that they're moving on to the second part of their day-long odyssey. And somewhere among those racers is a 34-year-old Wonder Woman named Rachel Branke. Rachel didn't expect to be here, but then again, so much of her life seems to be about defying expectations. Being a triathlete has many benefits. It's added to the quality of life for my whole family and for myself. We're more active, we're more intentional and purposeful when we're together. And it also allows me to be more intentional when it comes to my career. When I sit down to work, I gotta get it done because I gotta head out for an 18 mile run right after. After the birth of our fifth child, Evelyn, she's now three, I decided it was really time to start losing the weight. And so I decided six weeks that I would try my first triathlon, went and bought a bike, hadn't ridden since probably middle school, and did the try and I've been hooked ever since. My biggest role out of everything I do, I think is being a wife and a mother. You can't get away from it and I wouldn't want to anyways. It's an always on the go marriage. From the day that she got accepted to law school, she made it a goal that she was going to be a lawyer, she was going to be a mom, she was going to run a business. And now, she's a consultant to thousands of entrepreneurs. So the majority of my entrepreneurship has been self-taught. I mean, you can look at the degrees and the diplomas hanging on the wall, but to be honest, I didn't learn much through the formalized education. I learned the most from just being in the trenches and figuring out what needs to be done. And there have also been lessons never to be forgotten from a very different kind of struggle. I don't really fear failure, but I think a lot of what I do in the year and to succeed probably does arise out of having cancer at the age of 20. Following radiation, she's been in remission now for 11 years. And along the way, the family's also been working through the adversity of other uncertain times. I served in the military for 10 and a half years. I spent four of those years downrange in Iraq. I'm a very motivated individual, a very strong individual, but there's even some things like worrying if your husband's even going to come home, if your kid's even going to have a dad, that can take a toll on you. And so you need to learn to rely on other people. With five kids, two full-time jobs, and training schedules, there's definitely a give or take between both of us. Training can be five to six days a week. The height of training we're talking six to seven hours. So it's definitely a commitment you need to make with yourself, but also with your family. There's times that I have mother's guilt or wife guilt that I'm away from my family, but you can fix that by being very intentional for the times that you're home, that you're focused on your family. We can't always be giving to our career and to our families and not having any self-care. And for me, that's what triathlon is. So I competed in Raleigh 70.3 this past year and Ironman had reached out and asked if I could do an Ironman Minute. I show up at the expo, they pull me into a side room, they sit down and they start interviewing me, asking me all the standard questions. And then at the very end, they said they had one more thing for me. They pulled out a whiteboard and it was a bib for Kona with my name on it. As you know, this year is the 40th anniversary of Ironman. And we'd like to invite you to come to the Ironman World Championships this year in Kailua, Kona. No. You're lying! No! No, no, no. Okay, my God, you guys are filming me. Are you serious? Yes. No, no, you're, you're joking. I'm serious. You're going to Kona. Woo! I'm going to Kona. My whole family is coming. All five kids on a plane for 12 hours. We'll see how that goes. That'll be the real test. <laughs>
Kona for me is the granddaddy. I'm excited to see all the pros and the best age group athletes and be able to get to say I shared the same course with them. My real goal for Kona is to survive and finish, but overall I just want to take in everything. Rachel Brenke, out of the water and on the bike in her first Ironman World Championship. It's a little more than 59 miles to the turnaround in Javi, and a little less than 20 miles in, Lucy Charles has extended her lead over Lauren Brandon and Sarah Crowley to seven and a half minutes, with a larger group giving chase a little more than another minute behind. The men's outlook is tighter, with Anthony Cost and Andrew Starkowitz still one and two, and Cameron Wirth sitting just behind in third. The real movement is further back, with Daniela Reef now making her anticipated strong push past the large chase group. It looks like a key moment for the professional women is just ahead. In the Ironman World Championship, brought to you by Amazon. On a picturesque fall Saturday in Hawaii, the 2018 Ironman World Championship, brought to you by Amazon, is continuing. A streaming flow of age groupers are heading out of Kailua Kona on the bike, with others still going one stroke at a time, finishing up their swims in the bay. And out on the Queen Kahomanu Highway, Lucy Charles is enjoying some solitude up front. The 25-year-old from England, who was the runner-up in last year's race, is continuing to hold the lead on the bike for the professional women. But Daniela Reef, the defending champion, has been surging behind her. And it may only be a matter of time before she closes the gap to first. Even still eight minutes behind her, Reef's steady gains are continuing moving past Lauren Brandon to get into third. And then, just a bit further up on the highway, she rides past Sarah Crowley to pull into second. Though Crowley, last year's third place finisher, will hang close to Reef's wheel over the demanding 18-mile climb into Javi. A little more than halfway to the Javi turnaround, the men's picture is more tightly bunched, with Cameron Wirth, a 35-year-old Australian and former Olympic rower, now leading, just ahead of Andrew Starkowitz and Josh Amberger in the lead pack. Meanwhile, the 2014 champion, Sebastian Keenlay, is almost six minutes behind, battling to get back into the race after a career-best swim was neutralized by a tire issue when he got onto the bike. Up front, the top men continue to push the pace relentlessly, with Starkowitz moving out ahead and then working to increase his lead. And as those leaders jostle for position, back at the pier in Kailua Kona, you'll find a panorama displaying all this race represents. These are some of the most dedicated, driven people in the world convening in one place here to test the limits of what the body and spirit are capable of. And yet as stark as that challenge might sound, the scenes of the hundreds of age groupers continuing to stream into the first transition and out onto the bike are not of agony, but of celebration. With the crowd lining the streets cheering on the racers as they head out for the long ride to the north side of the island. A look from above would tell you that there are three top groups on the highway, and the third, two and a half minutes back of the leaders, is bracketed by a pair of Germans, Andreas Dreitz at the head, and defending champion Patrick Lange at the tail. While they're playing the long game, the leaders continue to push hard and jockey for position, and at the start of the climb to Javi, Wurf reclaims the lead. But again, not everyone is competing here to win a world championship. And back with the age groupers, 
there's one pair of racers who offer a portrait as inspiring as any you'll hear today. Kyle Pease is 33 years old, and he has cerebral palsy with spastic quadriplegia, a condition that affects his body, but not his mind. Kyle competes alongside his older brother, Brent, who pulls Kyle along in a kayak in the water, rides with him in a specially fitted bike, and pushes him in a wheelchair in the run. Years ago, father and son Dick and Rick Hoyt were the first special team to ever finish the Ironman World Championship together. The Pises were inspired by the Hoyts. And here are trying to be the second, after the Hoyts, to finish the race here in Kona. The Pises have a foundation that works to help other athletes with disabilities compete. But for the Atlanta natives, the heart of their mission can be found here when it's just them, two brothers, together a testament to the idea you can dream up just about anything and turn it into inspiring reality. While many age groupers like the Pease brothers are just getting started on the bike, the top professional men have reached the turnaround in Javi. Cameron Wirth, Andrew Starkowitz, and Josh Amberger still four minutes ahead of the large chase group, a group headlined by Patrick Longa. As they head back down the hill, many say this is where the Ironman World Championship really begins. And just a few miles back, Lucy Charles is still the women's leader, still upwards of seven minutes ahead of Daniela Reef and Sarah Crowley as she hits the turnaround. But as she starts the descent, she passes a familiar face, Daniela Reef, waving at her from second place. Charles knows the defending champ is coming for her. Three hundred and sixty four days a year, Javi is a quiet hamlet on the northernmost point of the island of Hawaii. But on the one other day, it's the Ironman World Championship. And at nine forty AM local time, the largest contending chase group in the men's professional race makes its way through the turnaround. Headlined by defending champion Patrick Longa and fellow contenders Tim O'Donnell and Braden Curry. Up ahead are the trio at the front of the race, with Josh Amberger still keeping pace with two world-class cyclists, Andrew Starkowitz and the leader Cameron Wirth. They're four minutes ahead and picking up speed as they head down the hill. As ever, Hawaii is offering a breathtaking backdrop for the day, even as throughout four decades of Ironman World Championships in Hawaii, thousands of competitors have come to know that the conditions typically serve as a challenge as much as an attraction. Not just the heat and humidity, but other factors too, like the crosswinds on portions of the Ventum bike course that can whip as high as 60 miles per hour across the highway. But this year so far has been a very welcome exception. One of the calmest days, in fact, in the event's history. A rain overnight did saturate the ground and the heat and humidity will continue to rise into the afternoon. But the lack of wind means the record times in the men's and women's swims might just be the start of a collection of all time marks to fall as the day goes on. Every Ironman competitor is here for a reason, of course. But it would be hard to find a story more unforgettable, more unfathomable, and more inspiring than 35-year-old Lee Chivers of Melbourne, Australia. And I always enjoyed running. I enjoyed being outdoors. One day I thought, oh, well, I might give this triathlon thing a go. Lee was originally a rower, and it's through that sport that he met a woman named Sarah Clark. The two began dating and competing in triathlons together. I was probably into it first before her, but she committed to the local triathlon series. 
six races. It showed how tough she can be and stuck with it. The couple loved to travel together and compete together. But in 2008, fate intervened with the story. One day at work, Lee got an unexpected phone call from Sarah's sister. She said, Sarah's had a seizure. She's, she's at the hospital. I remember walking into the, uh, the room and she'd had a CT scan and two doctors just walked in and they said, we found something and we don't know what it is. But if we don't operate, it's going to kill you. It took two initial craniotomies and then there was six weeks of radiation. The amazing thing was that she broadly made a full recovery, so into remission. And that's where we just had this, in a way, fairy tale, nine years. The fairy tale included a wedding, a house, and two sons, Hugh and Alfie. But cruelly, the story took another turn around Alfie's first birthday. Sarah's cancer returned, this time in the form of three aggressive, untreatable tumors in her brain. When she first got ill in 2008, I remember asking her what she believed in. She said, I believe in my family. Not knowing how much time she had left, Sara decided to do something for her family, writing a letter to her boys to make sure they'd always know who she was. Dear Hugh and Alfie, I won't be around to see you grow up. It's a hard thing to say and even harder to face, but you'll have to hear from others the little things that made me, me. My perfume of choice is Michael Kors. My favorite meal is spaghetti bolognese. Winter is my preferred season. I wish I was a better cook. I'm a keeper of mementos, tiny hospital name tags, the poem Lee wrote for my 21st birthday, first baby clothes. Don't be afraid of expressing your emotions. Love hard. Be brave in your convictions and believe in yourself. I can never emphasize enough the importance of good manners. You will have friends for a season, friends for a reason, and friends for life. Family comes first. Be kind to your dad. Sarah's letter went viral, read and shared by families all over the world. But there was another unthinkable twist back home. Alfie, barely one year old, also was having alarming health issues. The doctor came and she started walking back and she was just crying. The doctor was crying. She said, we found a mass on his head. And my response was, of course you have. You think that things can't get any worse, but you know, I'm afraid that they can. Mm. This past January, just nine months after being told that her cancer had returned, Sarah Chivers died at the age of 34. Yeah, we were broken, just broken. But you can't break because you've got a family relying on you. You've got Hugh, you've got Elfie, you need you. Elfie was, he was tough. He was so tough. Elfie had two 12-hour surgeries. His tumour was the size of a pear in the middle of his head. I mean, he was the toughest kid. And then he... He kept fighting, you know, he stayed alive for his mum. In June, five months after his mom died, Alfie Chivers lost his battle with his cancer. You're just so, um, I think you're at a loss to know what to do at all. Nothing mattered at that point. As Lee grappled with his heartbreak, there was one place to seek refuge, in Sarah's letter. You see, she'd written to all her boys, Alfie, Hugh, and their dad. She encouraged me to 
and keep her memory alive for the boys. She just thanked me for the time that we had in the face of everything. She'd make sure that I share what we enjoyed together, especially the times that we had when they were younger, and make the most of every moment, live my dreams, go after things that we hadn't done like the Iron Man. So just months after unimaginable tragedy, here's Lee Chivers in Kona, racing in the memory of those he lost, and with the inspiration of the partner who wanted him to be here. Back in the women's race, Lucy Charles, after setting a course record in the swim, added to her lead in the first half of the bike. But all the while, an all too familiar face was moving up the ranks. Daniela Reef is the three time defending champion for a reason. And now, having gone from 12th place at the start of the bike all the way to second, she'll continue to work to reel in the leader. What was once more than a 10 minute lead is continuing to rapidly dwindle as Reef is making an extraordinary push. With a little more than seven miles to go in the bike, she can see Charles ahead. And just a few minutes later, she comes up on her left. For the second year in a row, Reef is overtaking Charles late in the bike. And after the pass, she doesn't let up one bit immediately putting a gap between them. Daniela Reef is the new leader in the women's pro race, and she's streaking towards transition two on a record pace. As the professional men's leaders hammer back towards Kailua Kona on their bikes, what's been a pack of three for miles has begun to break up. Australia's Cameron Wirth is now a minute ahead, on his way to the next transition on record pace for the bike leg. And with Josh Amberger fading badly in a now distant third, Andrew Starkowitz is hanging on as tightly as he can to Wirth's relentless pace. But with the clouds dissipating and the sun beginning to blaze, there's much more of this story to unfold. The story of the women's professional race has certainly turned on the bike, with Lucy Charles, after setting a record in the swim course, getting passed by the defending champion, Daniela Reef, hauntingly similar to what happened a year ago. And as this remarkable day continues, it's all because of what happened on a day 40 years ago. When a group of athletes on the beach in Oahu, arguing over who were the better athletes, long distance runners, swimmers, or bikers, eventually decided the only way to figure it out was a race that incorporated all three. A field of 15 took off in the first edition in 1978, and 12 finished, with Gordon Haller, a U.S. Navy communications specialist, the first to earn that singular title, Iron Man. 50 athletes showed up the next year, and a few years later, in 1981, the race was moved to the Big Island, where it soon began to grow exponentially. In the decades since, Iron Man has become more than a race. It's a global movement, with 41 Iron Man events held annually and more than 85,000 athletes testing themselves over and over again. But at the center of it all is still this race, the World Championship, every October in Kona. And on this 40th anniversary of that first Ironman, with competitors from 82 different countries ranging from age 18 to 85, there's no better example of the power of 40 years of dreams than a look across this course on a beautiful Saturday in Hawaii. Back up front in the pro men's race, one of Cameron Wirth's central objectives was to come into an empty T2 as the leader. And sure enough, as he gets set for the run, he's in first, with a new course record for the stage, the third such record so far on the day. 
Andrew Starkowitz in second also finishes the bike ahead of the prior course record, two minutes behind the leader. But the top contenders for the overall race are picking up speed as Tim O'Donnell, Patrick Longa, and Bart Ernott race into T2. And moving up 40 places from the swim to the bike, Ernott came with a strategy. If you're uh, finished in Javi, it's, uh, it's a really long way back. So I think it would be good if you look at your own pace a little bit and try to be still strong in the last 30 miles. That's where the race starts. 25 minutes behind the men's leaders, Daniela Reef, the defending champion from Switzerland, comes into T2 the same way she did a year ago, holding the lead. Though this time there's something else, another new bike course record that's an incredible 18 minutes ahead of the old women's mark set in 2011. Lucy Charles comes in a minute 40 behind Reef, the second of four women who will come through T2 under the previous bike record. They'll make their way out to the marathon all in pursuit of Reef. All benefiting from early conditions as welcoming as Hawaii has ever offered in 40 years of Ironman history. As the professional men take to the Hoka One One running course, Cameron Wirth, the 35-year-old former pro cyclist who just set a new men's course record on the bike has a roughly two-minute lead. The big chase group is coming on strong, though, headlined by New Zealand's Brayden Curry, Belgium's Bart Ernott, and the defending champion, Patrick Longa. For the women, Daniela Reef is looking strong beginning her run her pace way ahead of the overall course record she set here two years ago. But Lucy Charles is also having a tremendous race, and she's holding in second just two minutes back. The battle for third is a more open question, with the familiar contenders in the mix including Britain's Corinne Abraham and the Australian Sarah Crowley. But closing in four minutes behind them is a rookie, and now the top American in the women's field, 36-year-old Sarah True of Hanover, New Hampshire. She was an Olympian in triathlon in 2012 and 2016, just missing out on a medal in London. And she's making a push here early in the run, making a push to be only the second American woman to get on the podium this decade With the leaders for both the pro men and women out on the run, T2 will now play host to an ever-growing flood of age groupers. Athletes of all ages, all kinds, from all parts of the world. Engaging in Ironman's unique choreography, dropping off their bikes, retrieving their running gear, and then making their way out for a marathon to finish off their day. Rachel Branke, the working super mom of five, will get to the second transition at about 3.45 p.m. local time. She was on her bike for more than seven grueling hours, but somehow still has a smile on her face as she comes in. She takes just about eight minutes to prepare for the run, and then she's on her way out. 26.2 miles to go. It's been Cameron Wirf and then Tim O'Donnell for the men, but the American is reeled in by the chase group led by Patrick Longa around the five mile mark. Over 26.2 miles. Every decision, every move has a consequence. And Patrick Longa seems to know exactly what he's doing. Very comfortable to be where he is in the race. Very confident in his ability to push forward when he's ready. At the seven mile mark, Wirf's lead is two minutes. By the nine mile mark, it's less than a minute. Longa has broken away from the chase group, 
He gets Worf in his sights, closes the gap, and makes the pass. Though not before the two competitors share a moment and acknowledgement of mutual respect. The defending world champion has taken the lead. Now he'll look to solidify it and maybe even make a bid for another course record. Back several miles on the highway, Daniela Reef, all alone at the front of the professional women's race, is continuing to push it. Getting her lead up to more than three minutes after five miles. Lucy Charles knew going into the marathon that catching her rival would be tough. But now she'll have to count on Reef hitting a huge wall here on the run. And if the contenders in the top two women's spots are familiar, a good 10 minutes back, there's more drama unfolding behind them, with a collection of competitors vying for the last place on the podium. Just shy of the 13-mile mark, Sarah Crowley gets passed by Sarah True, the American continuing to put in a remarkable showing in her first time in Kona. And the next contender to surge past Crowley is Germany's Anne Haug, the former Olympian looking stronger with every step forward and now striving to race her way into the number three spot. As the humidity rises in the Hawaiian afternoon, so too have the prospects of the 34-year-old Belgian, Bart Ernot, a four-time top 10 finisher in this race. Here, after finishing the swim in 46th place, he moved up to sixth in the bike and has surged even further in the run to second overall. But as strong as he's looking, Patrick Longa is looking better. The defending champion steadily stretching his minute-long lead as he enters the heart of the marathon. Longa is the only competitor in sight flanked by the lava fields as he makes his way back to the center of Kailua Kona. A contrast from Tim O'Donnell and Braden Curry, who are now side by side in fourth and fifth after overtaking a slowing Cameron Wirth. But also lurking just behind them is a streaking David McNamee, one of the strongest runners in the field, whose work for the day may only just be starting. Braden Curry pulls a few seconds ahead of Tim O'Donnell in the 17th mile, but the two of them aren't done jockeying for position as they pursue Longa. For the pro women, Daniela Reef comes into the infamous Natural Energy Lab still holding the lead, an eye-opening 22 minutes ahead of her winning pace a year ago, with a course record looking more and more possible. But as she begins the road back, there's a reminder that everyone's going fast today, including Lucy Charles, coming at her in the red, white, and blue six minutes back, and not giving up on her chances to catch Reef quite yet. Sarah True is roughly another nine minutes behind in third, completing a broadly spread out potential podium with a half marathon to go. But at this stage of the race, if you know your Ironman history, you know that nothing is guaranteed. And while the second and third place competitors eye each other as they go in opposite directions on the road leading back to Kailua Kona, there are others gaining ground, like Germany's Anne Haug, now in fourth, just a minute behind the American. Just after the 22nd mile, Sarah True comes into an aid station and slows to a walk. The tank is empty and needs fuel. And unfortunately, the stop will cost her third place as a few moments later, Haug runs by her. Also on the highway, Lee Chivers has begun the final stage of his day. Just months after the loss of his wife, Sarah, and son Alfie. He got through the swim and bike in a little less than six hours. Now, no doubt inspired by how much Sara wanted him to be here, he pushes forward, racing to finish as part of a campaign to bring awareness to brain cancer research. In Kona, family, friends, and fans have crowded the final steps to the finish line ready and waiting to give the professionals and age groupers alike as much of a boost as they can for the last few steps of the race. The best in the world are almost there in the 2018 Ironman World Championship, brought to you by Amazon.
It's mid-afternoon in Kailua, Kona, and the crowd at the finish line is primed and ready to welcome a familiar face as Patrick Longa takes the final steps of another extraordinary journey. A champion who's defended his title in dominant fashion. Patrick Longa! Longa can celebrate a world championship course record of 7 hours, 52 minutes, 39 seconds. The first Ironman world championship ever completed in less than 8 hours. But as important as history is, it turns out what's on Longa's mind is the most important piece of his future. I promised myself when I break the course record, Julia, please listen. You promised yourself what if you broke course record? Yeah, I think I have to go there. It's one of the most memorable scenes at a finish line ever, but the fans cheering will continue as four minutes after Langa, Bart Ehrnotz comes into the finish area at 7.56.41, a second sub eight hour time to revel in. And in second place, his best finish ever in Kona. The podium is completed by Britain's David McNamee, who went from seventh place to third in the final 10 miles of the marathon. And even with a pause just before the finish to acknowledge the crowd, his time of just over eight hours and one minute will be good for the third best ever on this course. While the champagne is sprayed and enjoyed on the podium, A half hour later, the crowd gets revved up again to welcome in another world champion. As dominant a force as this event has seen in a long time, it's Daniela Reef's fourth straight Ironman World Championship victory, and she's done it while shattering her own course record by more than 20 minutes. She overcame a jellyfish sting in the water and then had to make up 10 minutes on the bike before coming all the way back. And in the prime of her career, the 31-year-old from Switzerland is already an all-time great with more history to write. Lucy Charles, in her second Kona race as a pro, takes second place again, 10 minutes behind Reef's time. She set a course record in the swim earlier today, so there's plenty to celebrate. And at the age of 25, there's plenty of time for her to continue working to find a way past Reef in the years to come. Anne Haug moved into third place with less than five miles to go. And five minutes after Charles, she heads into the finish area. Looking strong to claim the final spot on the pro women's podium. In her first time in Kona, a tremendous performance for the 35-year-old from Germany. It's been a day of the unprecedented in Kona, with six world championship course records set overall. And beyond the champagne celebrations on the podiums, there are other celebrations just as meaningful at the finish as well. Like back on the men's side, where Tim O'Donnell finished fourth the third time that the Pennsylvania native has been the top American. And at the finish, there's a welcome sight waiting for him, one-year-old Isabel, 
ready to play with her dad, even if you'll need a few moments to catch his breath first. There's more parenting help coming for Tim, by the way, as his wife, Marinda Carfrey of Australia, remarkably posts her best time ever in this race, barely a year after giving birth to Isabel. And the fifth place women's finisher and three-time Ironman world champion has enough left for a hug and a kiss hello. Capping off a great family reunion. Just 10 months ago, Tim Don had a halo brace screwed into his skull following a training accident in Kona just a few days before he was set to race in the Ironman World Championship. He did everything he could to make it all the way back, and now here he is, a portrait of will, perseverance, and determination at the finish line. The afternoon is really just beginning here, with the first of almost 2,400 age group competitors coming in. And at 4.30 p.m., with a time of 9 hours, 25 minutes, and 19 seconds. Lee Chivers holds a small cape with his late son Alfie's name on it as he finishes the race. And with a kiss to the sky and a smile of satisfaction, a remarkable chapter in his life story has a fulfilling finish. This is what his late wife Sara wanted for him, to spend a Saturday in Kona, in the bay, on the bike, and on the road. Channeling his loss into a triumph of will, in the race that meant so much to both of them. And the best moment of his day is without a doubt this one, a reunion with four-year-old you. The Chivers boys have a lot ahead of them, but they will always have the memory of this day to sustain them. The sun is beginning to set in Kona, And while a mother makes her way back to town, her husband and five children anxiously await her at the finish line. A few months ago, Rachel Branke didn't even know she'd get the opportunity to be here. But now, she's part of one of the most emotional scenes in all of sports. There are hugs and kisses from her family, and another hug from a volunteer she bonded with at body marking at five o'clock this morning. They'll continue to stream in through the night. Kyle and Brent Pease make it all the way to the finish line, becoming the second special team ever to complete the world championship. Age groupers like Elle Goodall, who kicked her fast food addiction and lost more than 200 pounds on her way to becoming an Ironman. And at 85 years and 10 months, the oldest ever finisher of the Ironman World Championship, Hiromu Inada from Japan. Marcus Cook says Ironman saved his life. He competes in the hope of paying that forward and inspiring someone else to change theirs. 2,500 athletes from 82 different countries. All the way to Valerie Lindborg of California, the very last athlete to finish. And they all came here to Kona to be defined by this day forever. The 40th Ironman World Championship, brought to you by Amazon.